Aren't you glad that, that somebody came along and saw you as wild and dangerous and scary as you were and said, you belong in the church? And you went, there's no way I, I belong in that church. They don't want me. Jesus says, but I want you. I want you. I'm glad you're crazy like that. I'm glad you're going to make mistakes. I'm glad you're going to do things wrong. In the church, we are safe to be weak. And we recognize that God takes that weakness and uses it to accomplish His will. Somebody hired me at 18 years old and I gave that person hell. It was the worst hire they'd ever made. I got in trouble every other week at camp. I was in charge of the camp and they kept having to fix me. The kids were all finding Jesus. I was the trouble. Listen, folks, somebody saw in me. They saw beyond my craziness. They saw beyond the wildness. They saw beyond all that. And they saw my heart. And they went after that. And that's why you're here. They went after that in you. Christian Church, this is Mike. Hello. Hi, Joanna? Yes. Hello. Is this Georgie? Yes. Are you a youth worker in a church? Yes, we are. We noticed that you're not here. Yeah. Not here. Hey, you're just the kind of youth worker we need to have here. There's 4,400 of us. We have two airplane tickets for you. Really? You and your wife. Can you look out the window of your house right now? What do you see? Uh, I see a, I see a limousine. <laughs> we have a few little gifts for you just because we love celebrating folk like you. These are for your teenagers. You go, girl. You're welcome. Look who's here. Look how many of you gave people a headache and an ulcer. Why would a church spend money to have an office? And then why would they turn around and go, you're never in the office? Well, actually, my wife and I every week have a day of decadence, and that was it. <laughs> and it's so nice to go because I don't need it. Because it was a waste of time. Because my office is McDonald's. My office is Pizza Hut. My office is the football field. My office is hanging out with kids on the corner. My office is skateboarding. And the reason I have to be out there is because you have signs all around our building saying no skateboards. It really bugs me that we've decided in our churches to come up with the management model. And that's the model we're using to govern most of our churches. So we have to have strategic plans. We've got to have a mission statement. We've got to have little forms that we fill out to put down what it is we're doing. Give me a break. The church is not IBM. The church is the church. We sit there all day long with a report and we can't fill it out because there's no words. Because this is a calling that is beyond words. And you know it and I know it. And we're sick and tired of being forced into this, giving, taking Myers-Briggs test to see if we ought to be on the staff. Who in the hell came up with that idea? And I meant hell literally, because that's where I think it came from. I can see Jesus now. Follow me into this room so we can give you a Myers-Briggs test. <laughs> I don't think I talk enough about evil. I think sometimes I get mad at people and I forget about the fact that evil really is real. It is sneaking around. The only problem is I think evil looks a lot different than most people. Evil looks like busyness. Evil looks like workaholics. Somebody who's a workaholic in the Christian church, everybody pats them on the head and goes, you're so committed, you're so dedicated. No, you're needy and you're in trouble. It's time you and I realize the church is the place where people in our culture can go, say, do you have time to talk about this? And we go, yeah, I do. Let's sit down. Let's talk. I have time for you. There's one youth worker here who the elders said we were shocked to see the junior high kids sitting on the lawn in front of the church reading their Bibles and smoking. I'm thinking to myself, if I were in that church, I'd bring in that youth worker and say, I don't know what you're doing, but you deserve a raise. If you can get kids who are smoking to read the Bible, woohoo! How many times have you been in a board meeting and they called you in to say, listen, the Jones Memorial carpet has got a stain on it and it must be your fault. 
And from now on, you can't meet in the Jones Memorial Carpet Room. I'm thinking to myself, what kind of church has somebody donate a room and donate a carpet, and then they don't want to have anything happen to it? They want to be able to come back in 20 years and go, look at that carpet, it looks just like new. Are they out of their minds? If they're a church that's worth their salt, they're going to walk into a board meeting and go, you're not going to believe this. You know the Jones Memorial Carpet, it's only been there two years. It's worn out. Woohoo! And people get hurt and people get offended and you go, well, how can we keep that from happening? Well, I, there's a real easy way. Don't do anything. Just stays home and get in a room and ask lawyers to tell you what you can do. And there won't be anything left. I hope you realize that when Jesus comes, he comes to people like you and me who make mistakes, who don't do it right, who screw up, who do the stuff that, that maybe other people wouldn't do, who they had more sense. That's why we're in youth ministry. We go out on the edge. We do whatever it needs to be done to reach people. And don't you apologize for reaching the wrong kind of kids. And if they tell you you can't do it, then quit. Go get a job somewhere else and become a volunteer. Then they can't fire you. I want to be honest, if you're a youth worker here and you don't have a rule that is made because of your youth ministry, you're not a decent youth worker. There's got to be something. No soccer in the sanctuary. I just heard a couple weeks ago that this youth worker has one in his church. No playing hide and seek in the organ pipes. Yes! I'm sorry. Sort of. Jesus did not come to make us all nice. I'm telling you right now, when I go to Christian colleges, I say, you know why your parents brought you here? So you'd end up being a nice person. They brought you here so you'd be around nice kids and do nice things and meet a nice girl or a nice boy and, and have a nice marriage and end up in a nice house with 2.3 nice kids and a, and a little BMW in the garage. Oh, please! You can pray all day long about people who are hurting and in pain, but until we actually get dirty and get to work and start doing something, a lot of you have said, man, you know, you guys brought up so many things. You brought up compassion. You brought up the IJM. You brought up all this other stuff, the World Vision thing and everything else. That's just too much. Can't you just pick one? Well, I'd love to, but we can't. There's too much suffering in the world, and we can't ignore it. We just can't let it go by. We've got to finally say we cannot keep our head in the sand. We're going to find every way we can and I happen to think that if we gave up a bunch of our programs and just started getting kids serving that maybe Jesus would show up in a way we never thought possible folks that's what happens when you meet Jesus that's what happens when Jesus shows up look out I say yes to Jesus and he goes okay and you go I'm gonna die that's right I go to church, Sunday school, baptism, confirmation, I love Jesus, oh this is great, oh gatherings, they're true, ah! Next 40 years it's kind of like, you're dead. I want to tell you something. If I died tonight, and I had a heart attack, I'd hope I'd have just enough breath left as I was falling to the floor because I would look at every one of you and I would grab onto this microphone and I would go, what a ride. God, what a ride. You cling to Jesus. You give your life to him. It'll be wild. It'll be unpredictable. It'll be dangerous. But man, will you know how to dance.